What if Naruto was Sun's heir? Death's Guardian Part 12. Reading. Sun's heir. Death's Guardian by Engineer Forever. Chapter 12 Clearing Her Throat, Artemis read. Naruto grimaced as Q's potent chakra still cleansed his body of Ladin's poison. Now he not only has to save his aunt from the general, but now he has to do so with poison going through his veins. Oh joy, Talia said as she frowned, fiddling with her hands. And then there's the fact that he has to find a way to get Percy to activate his trigger, which he's positive will happen if one of the quest takers takes a mortal wound for the waterlogged brain-wielding teen and with his lineage, Naruto was the perfect choice to take the blow. Wait, what? Percy asked, not understanding him at all. I think he's going to do something major with you, Annabeth said in worry, and wondering why Naruto was doing it. Of course, he would be if Q's chakra wasn't so busy flushing the residue of that dragon's poison out of his body. In short, this is all shaping up to be a fan-fucking-tastic fight. Note the sarcasm. Noted, Leo stated, getting shoved by Nico for the stupid comment. Watch it, whiskers, Talia hissed from behind him as he accidentally tripped over a rock, sending it clacking across the ground. Zoe was taking the lead, Phoebe right behind her and Percy in the middle. Naruto merely groaned again, great, now his vision spinning. What else could go wrong? Ah, the metaphorical words to induce Murphy and his accursed law, Hermes said as his head shook. Damn, the poison is really getting to him. I mean, sure it's good that it didn't kill him, but no way he can fight like that, Hazel stated in worry. I know, sure we adapt, but with something like that, it isn't adaption. Just a crazy risk, Jason said, not the best case scenario. Lady Artemis, the two hunters exclaimed as they entered a large cave in the side of the mountain overlooking the island. Naruto grinned slightly as they ran towards his aunt before he paled when he saw what she was doing. Artemis was kneeling down, her hands outstretched behind her and holding a giant slab that stretched down through the cavern roof, nearly crushing her, up with her back. Sweat was dripping down the side of her face and Naruto knew that, despite being a goddess, she couldn't keep it up forever. Artemis tried to hold in her shiver at that moment, holding up the sky itself, never again. Apollo's face was void of emotions at the scene. All the gods shifted around somewhat at the scene before them. So the guests of honor finally arrive, a familiar dark voice taunted. Naruto turned and glared at the titan that stood at the other end of the cavern. Next to him was a familiar pale blonde teen whose eyes looked darker than before. Hermes winced at that, seeing his boy at his most likely worst. He looked so ill. Atlas, of course you're the general, Naruto mumbled loud enough for Percy to overhear. The blonde could hear the younger teen's gears in his head clicking the prophecy together, making him smirk slightly, before stepping in front of the group, his chest heaving slightly more than before. And here comes that wonderful shortness of breath that came with a lot of poisons. I hate when that happens, Apollo said, trying to joke to hide his worry. Hello, Naruto, Luke greeted coldly, before smiling warmly at the glaring daughter of Zeus, Talia. Luke, the girl spat in response. Talia frowned, wondering how her other was going to deal with Luke. She felt a hand grab hers and saw Annabeth squeezing her hand gently making the hunter return the favor with a small nod. The tension was so thick you could probably cut through it with a knife. I thought that Grover was with you, Luke said to Percy, border lining conversation. The younger demigod didn't answer, making Luke hum before smirking mockingly, are you still mad at me for the stabbing thing? Just a bit, yeah, Percy replied with a glare. Not the best way to last see someone, Percy mumbled. Come on Percy. Just get over it already, Luke said before coughing into his hand. Clearing his throat, the teen started again, sorry about that, just adjusting to something I ate. Before we get to the whole fighting and killing thing, can I ask a question? Wow, casual much, Nico asked at the sheer arrogance Luke carried. Tell me about, Percy said, a bit peeved. You just did, but I suppose we could allow another, Naruto said. Cheeky banter. Even now, Jason asked surprised. There is always time for cheeky banter dude. Always, Leo said in a serious tone. Stopping Phoebe from running forward with a pointed look. The hunter growled and backed down, 
preparing her bow and aiming at the smirking titan. Atlas hadn't moved from his spot, preferring to watch with interest. As, Percy and Talia said together with scowls on their faces. Still making cute jokes, aren't you, deadpan the son of Hermes? Luke's gaze hardened and he asked, where is the Ophiatorus? Not here, obviously, Naruto retorted, his left hand slipping into his pants pocket as he leaned back to relax. While he didn't show it, aside from the slightly heavier breathing that could be mistaken for anticipation, Naruto was not ready to fight. Ladin's poison was proving quite difficult for Q to completely eradicate at the pace he was currently going. While he could just flare a shit ton of the former Biju's chakra to cleanse himself of the poison, the aftermath would result in Naruto being useless to the problem at hand as that much potent chakra overrode his systems and always knocked him out. So he has a solution to the problem, but it would leave him worse than he already is. Not good, Annabeth said while nibbling on her bottom lip, somewhat hyped for the fighting to start. Luke's jaw clenched and his nostrils flared in anger before he calmed himself down and then looked at Talia, that's fine, we could always just summon him. No you can't, Percy sang out with a grin. He gestured to a small pool behind him while still looking at Talia, just ask him to come to you, Talia and we'll let you all, even Artemis, live. I thought your kids are good at lying, Apollo whispered to Hermes, who just gave him a, not cool, look. The sun god raised his hands in surrender. Bullshit, Naruto screamed in his head while switching his gaze to the titan. He wasn't fooled, he knew just how smart Atlas was and to be a general one had to be. This guy wasn't all muscle like some modern cartoons or comics made him out to be. He was a force to be reckoned with and when the time came, he would go for the titan. Cut the head off the snake and the rest shall die with it. Even in his condition he would go for the worse area of the fight, Artemis frowned while she stopped reading. She turned to her twin and added, it does seem like something you would do. Apollo shrugged, true that if something like this happened, why would I have to call him? Talia asked in confusion. Luke snorted, as much as we both don't like it, you're the daughter of Zeus. It would have to show up at your call. Zeus frowned at the truth in the boy's statement. Zoe and Naruto shared a look before Naruto looked back at Atlas, who saw this and his smirk fell into a thinking frown. Naruto knew that the Titan was trying to figure out the why to what they already knew, Bessie wasn't going to come if Talia called it. The Ophiatorus was far too loyal to Percy for the rescue to be called by anyone else. A boy and his sea cow, Talia said dramatically with a sigh before she burst into snickers. Oh, be quiet. Percy pouted at her snickering face. Then after it does, we could kill it and be granted the power to destroy the Olympians. Luke exclaimed with a grin, think about it, Talia, you could finally get payback for being turned into a tree for seven years. Talia frowned and shook her head, banishing those painfully thoughts from her head. Talia did think about it, and admittedly that much power sounded very tempting. Then a new thought occurred to her and she hesitantly asked, did, did you know I was that tree when you poisoned it? Talia grit her teeth. He did know, he had to have known. Luke's grin slowly fell before he shook his head, that's not the point. Just call the Ophiatorus and we'll be able to set everything right. You knew, you knew I was still alive when you poisoned me. You son of a bitch. Talia roared, charging at him with her spear. Luke barely had enough time to parry it with his sword. Hermes pursed his lips at that comment of Luke's mother, but let it go since Talia had every right to be angry. Talia clenched her fists, watching the scene. The proverbial gun was shot and Atlas stood, grabbing the javelin leaning against his seat while the three archers unleashed their arrows at him. With a simple swing of his spear, the arrows were broken. Naruto's shoulders slumped at the action. Ah man, that was my last thunder arrow he complained before leaning back to avoid the wide swipe the titan made with his weapon. Putting his empty right hand behind his head, Naruto flipped backwards to land next to Percy, folding his bow away and gripping his right wrist. And so it begins, Ares said with an excited grin. Roar for me, Kyubi no Kitsune! Naruto exclaimed, causing his shield and sword to appear, although the markings had turned from a shimmering gold to a ruby red. Unsheathing the blade, Percy noticed that the sword had changed as well. 
It was longer, if only just by an inch, and had become more akin to a fang than a sword as it left the sheath. Naruto glanced at him with a grin. Wicked, Leo grinned at the design. How does it change? Annabeth asked with wonder. Perhaps it is conditional from the beast in the bracelet, her mother suggested. Gotta love contingency plans, he said jovially before looking ahead, duck. Percy did so, rising back up to just barely use Riptide to deflect the blade of Atlas's spear. Naruto ran forward, bringing his sword down before swinging upwards. Atlas caught the blade in his bare hand, yanking it from the teen before tossing it aside. As it bounced off the wall, the sword clattered and Naruto felt the blood fade from his skin as Atlas brought his spear back. A swordsman he is not, Ares grunted. Well Atlas does have stone-like skin, and is really good at fighting, Apollo spoke in defense of his kid, besides, Naruto's far more of a bow guy. As I'm told they say today, batters up. Atlas announced with a savage grin before swinging his spear in a backhanded slash. Naruto was hit with the flat side of the spear and sent soaring to land next to Artemis. Shit, Apollo cursed with a wince. Artemis frowned at the sight. Nephew, the goddess grunted out. Naruto groaned and slowly pushed himself back to his knees. He narrowed his eyes as Phoebe's arrows were deflected before she was impaled in the stomach. No, Talia gasped as Artemis paused in shock, before stealing herself to continue. Clenching his fist, Naruto got back up and ran forward, jumping up and catching the hunter as she was thrown off the spear. Her momentum caused him to fall to the ground on his back. Ugh, what do you eat? He lightly joked, getting a weak snort from the hunter. Definitely a son of Apollo, Artemis said, but her voice was full of worry for her hunter. The demigods could feel the tension in the story alone as it filled the chamber. He laid her back on the ground shifting himself to kneel next to her and placing his hands over her wound. D don't worry about me, Phoebe protested, help them. I promised that no one was going to die, Naruto returned with a furious determination in his eyes as he shifted Q's chakra into his hands, and I don't ever break promises. That is my nindo, my ninja way. Cute, but everyone dies in war, kid. You can't stop it, Ares said in a cynical tone. Kit, if you do this, Naruto's praying cut off Q's warning. Apollo, glorious lord of the sun, help me heal what's been done. Apollo, master of medicine and health, help me without prayers during this battle and I will give you my recently earned wealth. A golden glow surrounded Naruto's already red hands and he pressed them against Phoebe's stomach. The girl cried out in pain as the potent chakra pressed against her wound manipulating her blood and organs without poisoning her as it would have without Apollo's blessing. So he can use the demonic healing coupled with Apollo's blessing for others, Athena said intrigued. Seems like it, the father agreed, wonder what the wealth was. At least Phoebe will be okay for now, Artemis said with a light sigh, but it was still up in the air until the battle was done. Naruto clenched his jaw as he heard Percy's sword clang against Atlas's spear, trying to heal Phoebe quickly without screwing anything up. By the time he had finished, Phoebe had passed out and Percy was running towards him, with the general hot on his heels. Naruto managed to move Phoebe out of the younger teen's way but was backhanded by Atlas when he tried to slow the pursuing titan down. Winces were heard in the camber at the image on the screen. Naruto was thrown back into the cavern wall and sank to the ground with a groan. Atlas swung his spear, barely managing to lightly slice across Percy's back and causing him to stumble. This allowed Atlas to put less distance between himself and the demigod. Poseidon gripped his throne tightly, his face set in stone but he was clearly worried about his son. Naruto shook his head, groaning as he once again pushed himself to his feet, looking at Percy and Atlas. Percy looked like he was having problems lifting his sword while Atlas brought his spear up. Thanks to a certain asshole, Percy spat while turning to the side at Ares, giving a glare. The god just shrugged at him without care. Poseidon looked ready to slap a bitch though. A bitch of war, that is. Eyes widening, Naruto acted before his brain could catch up with his plan. The other battle in the cave came to a halt when the two combatants heard a familiar word shouted out. H-I-R-A-I-S-H-I-N. 
Percy closed his eyes when he realized Air's curse wasn't going to lift anytime soon and accepted his fate. He heard the sound of something akin to leather and or flesh being sliced through and winced. After a few tense seconds, Percy opened his eyes and felt his jaw plummet to the ground. Standing in front of him with his back to the titan, Naruto stood with that damned annoying yet friendly grin on his face. He was wearing the Nemean lion's jacket and his shield fell to the ground. Eyes widened at the scene. No, Apollo said at seeing the gory picture. Some of the demigods looked away, saddened at the sight. Talia looked sad at the screen for her other, even with someone great by her side, she still lost him. Maybe love really wasn't meant for her after all. Do me a favor, Jackson. Don't die, he said as he coughed up purple-colored blood before falling to the side revealing the large gash he received in the ruined state of the seemingly impenetrable jacket. Percy's eyes widened, all for him, damn it, why was it always for him? He grit his teeth in anger and clenched his fists, hissing out, fuck. Atlas smirked, slinging the amethyst blood on his spear aside before kicking the blonde's body further down the cavern, once again landing near Artemis. The goddess released a small cry of anger at seeing the teen's corpse land near her partially due to the fact that he looked a lot like Apollo in his natural form, and partially because he was one of the first males she cared for in over a millennia. Apollo looked down solemnly as Artemis took a breath and continued on, the shaking picture playing in her mind. There was no doubt that it was something that would haunt her other for a while. I think I'll count that as the first casualty of war, Atlas chortled as he spun his spear around, time for the second. But he promised, Talia muttered to herself. He promised. Her. Dot her other. She quickly added to her thoughts. Percy's mind was racing, trying to figure out why Naruto just gave his life to save him. You're just like how he used to be. Apollo's voice echoed in his head. You do understand the lesson I cherish the most. Those who break the rules are trash, but those who abandon their precious people are worse than trash. Naruto said. Naruto wasn't. He wasn't always as he is now. Grover chimed in. He's got experience at cheering kids up and making them see him as an older brother, commented Apollo once more. You and I both know Naruto's looking out for ya, Percy heard himself say. I swear on the sticks that by the time the sun centers in the sky Auntie Arte will be back home and our quest will be over without a single death, and I never break my word, for that is my Nindo, my ninja way. Naruto's determined voice proclaimed. Waste of a flashback, Ares mumbled, getting a few dirty looks that he ignored. The pool of water next to Talia and Luke suddenly shot up and raced over to slam into Atlas's back, forcing him to fly face first into the wall. There's that trigger, Nico whistled out, splatting Atlas into a wall, nice one, Leo chuckled. Percy had a look of angry determination on his face, for while he didn't get along with Naruto and the blonde picked on him, they did bond. Naruto was the big brother he never had, one that picked on him and picked him up when he fell, the brother he wished for when he was younger. Ah, Percy wants a big brother, Talia teased, trying to lighten the mood a bit. Every kid thinks that once in a while, Percy countered as he rolled his eyes, his foot bouncing on the floor, eager to hear more. They may be otherwise according to blood, but this quest proved that blood isn't always thicker than water, the water in this case being the bonds of brothers. Air's curse faded and Percy's green eyes seemed to gleam as he jumped up, landing on the still rushing water, and, skated, towards Atlas. Bringing his ancient blade back over his shoulders, Percy swung with a roar of anger. Whoa, you know, I have never seen an angry Percy before, Piper said. It isn't pretty, that's for sure, Annabeth attested for a fact. I'm right here, Percy pouted. I know, was the cheeky reply from his girlfriend. His first strike managed to cut deeply into the back of the titan's massive left shoulder, making Atlas release a shout of pain and fury. Percy brought his sword back up and over his other shoulder, slicing through the titan's back. Percy brought Riptide back in preparation to pierce through the titan's back as his instinct screamed for him to end it. Poseidon cheered for his son as some of the gods looked impressed at the two-hit combo. Atlas's hand moved and caught the blade in a manner that one would think impossible. Percy's anger draining and turning into disbelief as the titan forced himself to turn around and glare at the boy. Rage boost over, 
Hazel stated weakly. The rushing water came to an abrupt halt when Percy was punched by the giant fist of Atlas right in the gut, sending him soaring through the cavern to land on his back near Talia and Luke. Okay, ow, Percy said for his other. Hell of a hit, Jason mumbled with a wince. The girl cried out and turned to charge at the titan, only to be restrained by her once friend in an arm lock choke hold, which she immediately struggled to get out of. Little upstart. Atlas snarled as the water around him crashed to the ground, its controller being winded from the blow. The Titan of the West stormed forward, planning on finishing that pest who tried to drown him, when a hand latched onto his ankle. Shit. Go kid, Hermes said in surprise. Talia felt her hope rise, but it was only for a fleeting moment as to what came next. Leave. Them alone. Naruto coughed out as he hung onto Atlas's foot. Looking down. Atlas's fury grew, as the blonde he was sure was dead, glared up at him with defiance and purple blood pooling around his mouth. Rearing his other foot back, Atlas kicked the teen in the face with an angered, get off of me, demigod. Come on kid, don't let that end ya, Apollo said under his breath. Even if this kid wasn't real here, he was someplace else, and it was killing him to see this. Naruto rolled and landed on his back, his chest heaving and his shield too far not that it would make a difference at this rate. He coughed purple blood up once more, weakly raising a hand to his chin, taking some of the blood with his fingers before looking at it. Releasing a dry chuckle, Naruto felt his head roll back and closed his eyes. Done in by an oversized statue and the little pale traitor, this seems awfully familiar somehow, he mused thinking about Payne's plan and Sasuke's defection. He coughed again and his vision went blurry before darkening. Dad. M. Sorry. Naruto's breathing stilled and his head fell to the side. Everyone bowed their heads a bit to the child of the sun. Apollo looked as bright as a piece of coal, his eyes to the floor. Talia looked sad. After seeing him in this story, she thought her other could find happiness outside the hunt. Don't get her wrong, she loved being a hunter, but even she had moments where she hoped things had been different. Blue eyes with sun-like designs around the pupils snapped open, the pupils constricting with the amount of light he woke up to. Naruto blinked several times before sitting up with a groan, rolling his neck as he did so. He then got a glance at his surroundings and humped. This, this doesn't look like Elysium, he mumbled before standing up. Looking down at himself, he found that he was wearing a white tunic with a yellow scarf around his neck and a similarly yellow sash around his waist. Sandals similar to the Olympians covered his feet and bracers adorned with Greek suns were on his arms. Oh, stylish, Aphrodite appraised critically. Yes, it is not Elysium, Hades said with a frown. The boy died, he should be waiting for his boat to be judged. That's partially because this isn't Elysium, a voice startlingly similar to his own said with a snicker, making Naruto turn around to find whoever spoke. The speaker was just a few inches taller than the blonde, with the same shade of hair and eyes. His face was much narrower, though, and he wore only a royal blue scarf, what looked like a white skirt with a blue sash, and the same sandals and bracers that Naruto wore. The lookalike grinned, his whiskerless cheeks being the only other difference between the two, and held a hand out, niece to finally meet you, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Who is that? Percy asked. Shish. Annabeth said to him as she listened eagerly. The gods were murmuring a bit, wondering why this person looked so familiar. J just Uzumaki, Naruto replied softly, slowly reaching out and grabbing his fellow youth's hand, where am I? Who are you? In time, in time, the other blonde said, retracting his hand and lacing his fingers behind his head. He then walked around Naruto, looking him up and down, before standing in front of the blonde with another grin. You look good, kid. Yeah, not creepy whatsoever. Leo mocked with a nod. Random stranger tells me I look good. Makes for great conversation. I don't swing that way. Deadpan the teen, making his unknown acquaintance laugh. After calming down, the unknown youth grinned once more. I know you don't. I know a lot of things about you. You love ramen to the point it's unhealthy. Same with the color orange. You wanted to be Hokage more than anything until you got to the States. You love moving fast in any which way you can. You'll do anything for your friends and family, and you think that you're dead. 
Accurate. Apollo said before that last line hit him and his eyes bugged out. Wait, he thinks he's dead. Yes, apparently this person says that he isn't, Artemis said after double-checking the line. She felt some relief for her other and brother filling her. What, are you saying I'm not? Naruto asked. The youth grinned and tapped the side of his nose. That'd be telling, he sang, making Naruto scowl. Patting the teen on the shoulder, the youth continued, Ah, lighten up, kid. Why so serious? What happened to the prankster? Did he grow up? This guy knows far too much about him, Jason stated with a frown. He kind of had to after he was given a quest, Naruto growled in annoyance. Well no need to be a brat, I was just playing around, the youth said with a grin, you're very confused. Curveball of the day, we all are right now, Hyper said with a deadpan. Well, yeah, wasn't I dead? Naruto asked, getting real sick of not getting straight answers. We all are. You were, seven years ago, the youth said with a grin. The blonde youth raised his hands and waggled his fingers, now you're in the fade. Ooh, so scary. The fade, Nico asked, and turned to his father, what's that? I've never heard of that term, the rich one answered with a frown. Is everything a joke to you? Naruto asked his fellow blonde. Only when I can make it so, was the retort. The teen's smile didn't die out but that's not the question you want answered. I want to know where I am and who you are, Naruto reiterated. No you don't, sang the youth as he flopped back and relaxed on the ground, try again. Yes, I do, Naruto snapped. No you don't, oh us, really, Hermes asked with a groan. Yes, I do, yeah, they are going to do it, Percy sighed out in disbelief. Nope, yes, nah, uh, yes, neen. German, Nico asked with an arched brow. Yes, ye know. Gods above will you tell me where I am and who you are just so I can get back and save my friends. Naruto exploded. There's that limit, Hades chuckled out. The teen looked at him for a moment before his smile widened and his similar sun-filled eyes gleamed. Well, why didn't you just say so? The teen asked before kipping up from the ground. His left arm went across his stomach and his right crossed over his back in a bow, names Helios. Son of Hyperion, brother to Selene. And welcome to the deepest part of your soul, the Fade. Silence filled the chamber at the proclamation. No wonder he looks so familiar. Apollo cried out as he slammed a fist into his open palm. I truly had forgotten what he looked like, Artemis added. She silently wondered where the Faded God's sister was. Little bastard. Ares grunted. Hephaestus smiled at his buddy while his wife sighed dreamily at seeing the hunky boy of the sun. The other gods were talking among themselves about this revelation while the demigods were gaping that a faded god was talking to the not so dead protagonist. Naruto gaped at the youth, his mouth trying and failing to make coherent words. After a moment of this, he managed to get the right word out. What? Yep. Yeah. Congratulations, Naruto. You're the lucky member of the, I am a reincarnated god, club. Helios said with a laugh. For the second time again, the chamber came to silence. Is is that possible? Percy whispered to Annabeth, but she was too catatonically in shock that she couldn't answer. Apollo looked down at his crotch and patted himself while whispering in praise, good job guys. The remaining gods were just gaping, not knowing what to say along with their shocked children. At least we understand the sun's heir. In the title, Athena said after a moment, still in surprise at something she never thought possible. Lord Hades has gotten some twisted ideas on the fields of punishment, Naruto mumbled. Even I couldn't think up that, Hades admitted. He was then pinched and looked at Helios like he had two heads, what was that supposed to do? Did you feel it? The former god asked with a small grin. Naruto opened his mouth and then paused. He didn't feel it. If this was a punishment, as soon as he realized that fact he would have been placed in a much more painful environment. True that, Nico nodded. And since that didn't happen, that meant, that meant. Holy, shit, such language, Hestia frowned. I love that phrase, Helios said with a laugh, it's so wrong, yet so right at the same time. It must really annoy Hestia, though. Kind of prudish that one. Hestia squawked at that. Helios, 
Even dead was still such a little troublemaker. How dare he? Why you really are Helios, right? This isn't some joke. Naruto asked cautiously. The former god nodded proudly and Naruto just stared at him before he spoke again, holy shit. Helios snickered and grinned at the team, I think we've gotten the point that this is worthy of, holy shit, Naruto. No, not really no. You can say it a few times more, Hermes confessed as he slid down in his throne, totally confused and in awe. So why me? Naruto asked after he got his thoughts together. Helios arched a brow and Naruto elaborated, why am I the one you reincarnated into? Well, you're my kid, you're awesome, my genes are amazing, and this just happened. Head cannon. Apollo cheered and stood up, doing a little dance in glee. Behave yourself, Artemis scolded, but was still out of it at the sheer surprise this brought out. No way, this is too awesome not to get the victory dance. Well for one, I didn't really have a choice of reincarnation until about 500 years ago, Helios said scratching his cheek sheepishly, wasn't until Lady Order decided that the only way to stop chaos was to fight with chaos on her side. And it wasn't like I could choose who I reincarnated into. The god's breath hitched at the mention of order and chaos. The first age, Annabeth whispered in awe. Goo, was Naruto's intelligent reply. Nice sound effect of confusion, Helios complimented. The faded god clarified, but what I mean is that this whole Titan v Gods is actually a chess-like game between chaos and order, the true rulers of the universe. Zeus shifted in his throne, a large frown on his face. A game? Mouthed Poseidon in distaste. Hades seemed to simmer at this detail. With how Percy Jackson has been doing, though, Order decided she needed another ace in the hole and brought you out of the hidden lands to activate her contingency plan. Percy. Percy Jackson, an ace for the embodiment of Order itself. I'm lost, Talia admitted, hands in the air. With you in play, the whole seven hero prophecy gets cancelled out. What? Piper exclaimed. Jason and Leo looked shocked and Hazel was sputtering in surprise. Percy and Annabeth looked at each other in concern. But, but what happens to us if there is no prophecy of seven? The daughter of love asked in fear, turning to Jason, who was still wrapping his head around the fact. Are we, are we just going to stay where we were? Leo asked, dread filling him. I don't know, the son of Jupiter spoke, looking as though he swallowed something sour. He didn't like it at all. And Chow's plan, which is funny in itself because one would think he did things randomly, gets fucked up. Percy turned to his father and asked, so no Gaia now? It seems so, Poseidon nodded. Apollo whistled, all their known history changed just because of his kid, nice. Wait. Dot are you saying that I'm, I'm not supposed to be alive? Naruto asked with wide eyes. Oh, no. You're supposed to be alive, you just never were supposed to return to the Olympian Wars until after the Fourth Shinobi War, Helios answered. F Fourth Shinobi War, Naruto asked, paling rapidly. Oh Helios, you spoiler jackass you, Apollo cracked up, he missed his old buddy. But now he was back in his kid, best dimension ever. Yeah, can't tell you much because it's supposedly going on right now but I can say it's going to mix with this war and the results aren't going to be pretty, Helios groaned before grinning, but let's get back to what's important. Why you and I are meeting? Do tell, Zeus ushered for his daughter to continue. I have a feeling this is going to result in a power boost of some kind, Naruto mumbled, but those kind of things always come with a catch. Indeed, most anime prove this, Apollo nodded in understanding. All his other power-ups have had a cost. I wonder what this one is going to be. Leo asked. Who knows? Nico replied, too interested in what was going to happen. Yeah, the catch is that Zeus is going to be doing a shit ton of damage control baby. Helios crowed happily. What? Zeus shouted in surprise. Oh Helios, as charming as ever, Hades said with a snicker. I think this just became my current favorite book, Poseidon stated with a grin. The king of the gods glowered at his brothers, the backstabbers. As he started to glow, the sun is back. Ain't nobody can stop me now. Amen to that, my brother from another mother. Apollo crowed happily back. What? Naruto repeated, covering his eyes as Helios became brighter, 
What do you mean? If you need a boost just give me a holler. Helios called out. As the light became blinding, Helios raised his arms and cried, Now, let's light it up. Why do I feel like that had just become the most epic line in the history of ever, just now? Hermes asked. Because it just did, Apollo grinned impishly, I am so using that. Thanks Helios, even while gone you rock. Artemis groaned. She had a feeling that this was not going to end well. In the few milliseconds that Naruto had been gone, Luke was holding a thrashing Talia around, having gotten her in a new hold that would discourage her from trying to shock him. Talia growled for letting her guard down with clenched fists. And Atlas was stomping towards the slowly rising Percy. Phoebe was almost back from unconsciousness and Zoe was using her bow to get back to her feet. Atlas was but a few strides away from Percy when he felt the first pulse and stopped. Slowly, almost mechanically, the titan of endurance turned around and his eyes widened. The viewing party waited patient for what would happen. Naruto's body was starting to glow, the purple blood turning into a mist-like substance as his body heated up. Eventually the glow became so bright that even the titan had to raise a hand to shield his eyes. Gets that from you, sunspot, Ares chuckled, while Apollo just grinned. His kid really did now. Another pulse of energy rippled through the mountain, making the few standing stumble as it pushed them while it washed over those trying to regain their strength. The golden glow encircled Percy, Artemis and Phoebe, making them feel warmer than they ever had before, not like being hot from the sun, but comforted in a hug. Well, a guy hug in Percy's case, Hazel joked, getting a few laughs from the others. Atlas lowered his arm and bared his teeth at what he saw, impossible. You faded eons ago. Eat its stone face. The sun is back, and better than ever. The current god of the sun stated an announcer from a boxing match. The few that could followed his gaze and Artemis' eyes widened in shock. Luke and Talia were sharing the same surprised gaze that was on Percy's face. The once bleeding and bruised blonde that laid near Artemis was gone, in his place a golden fire encased teen with several blue Greek runes running up and down his arms, legs and across his chest. On the center of his head was the symbol of Olympus, glowing a bright blue. Now, he is hot, Apollo said as he grinned wildly. Lame, his younger brother said, but still grinned. It was an epic sight. Oh, he does pull it off well, Aphrodite admitted with a sly grin. Not now, Artemis said to her fellow goddess before she resumed reading. Naruto's eyes snapped open and the coloration had switched, with his whole eye being mostly gold while two blue suns centered in the orbs. His mouth quirked upward in a smirk and he shed the once impenetrable duster that he wore. Reaching into his pocket, Naruto pulled out a small scroll and opened it, unsealing his old jacket given to him by his father. Donning it and tossing the scroll away, the room became an impressive amount of degrees warmer, and the flames turned from red to blue while the runes shifted from his skin to the jacket. Scratch that, now he is the hottest thing since hot, and he got it all from his Mixmexy daddy. The god of the arts cackled in glee. Let's try this again, Atlas, Naruto started, his voice echoed by that of Helios as he put his right fist into his left open hand. First time you fought Helios, you got your ass handed to you. Which rocked, Ares attested as he recalled the fight. You fought me, and I got my ass kicked. But you were also poisoned, Talia defended quickly, but blushed at how fast she did so. Some snickered around her, she groaned. She was getting far into this. It's time for round three. Winner takes all. Ding, ding, Percy crowed with glee, this was going to be a whole new ball game. Artie, quickly read the next chapter. Apollo urged eagerly the others in the room nodding along with him. Zero Frank panted as he crossed the state line of Delaware no longer than an hour ago as the night set in. Anigo was a persistent little bastard, the Roman gave him that much. Frank had mostly done guerrilla tactics on the army of gerbils chasing him all the across Maryland. But now, there he is, a squeak voice shouted. Frank turned around and smirked at them, even waving at them as he pulled a line and boxes upon boxes crushed his tiny foes. He was now in the closed Christiana Mall, and had set up some traps in Macy's. He quickly left the store and headed for the general hunting store. It was time to go Rambo on these little turd nuggets. 
Rolling her eyes at her twin brother's urging, Artemis continued as the chamber eagerly wanted more. On Olympus, the council was roaring with accusations and questions. So basically just another Tuesday? Hermes asked with a grin. Aphrodite was accusing Ares of using this plot to mess with her own plans. Aphrodite gasped and glared at Ares. The war god held up his hands and quickly said, I ain't that stupid. Much to Hephaestus' amusement, the smith god snickered while he received a glare from Ares. Herm's snakes George and Martha were arguing loudly to the point that Naruto's seal was useless, giving the poor messenger a headache since it was right in his ear. So he did make something for me. Oh bless his heart. Now, how to travel dimensions? Hermes asked himself in thought. Poseidon and Athena had somehow spiraled back into their argument over Athens once again. Said gods looked at each other, immediately looking away from one another with a huff. Hera and Hestia were wondering aloud if this meant Selene or Eos was waiting to be found. It would certainly be interesting to see them once more, better than Helios. Hestia pouted slightly, as Hera nodded while giving a small and amused chuckle at the childish statement of her older sister. Apollo was proudly crowing to aboard Dionysus that it was because of his, awesome genetics, that his old friend had returned in the form of his son. Dionysus groaned, he could feel Apollo's rambling from here. So basically all my crowing a few minutes ago, Apollo said with a smirk. Apollo, be silent, Zeus boomed at his son, getting annoyed with the constant interruptions. Okay, fine, the sun god said with a pout and crossed his arms childishly. And Demeter was interrogating Hades to the best of her abilities, while the eldest of the big three just ignored her. Demeter ruffled up a bit at that. Hades chuckled at her misfortune like a certain balding, donut-loving Simpson's character. Zeus was pinching the bridge of his nose as his head throbbed in pain. Zeus nodded to his other, understanding completely. Ever since that first wave of familiar power, every immortal stopped what they were doing and returned to Olympus. Poseidon, who was taking care of the Ophiotaurus and the Satyr Grover Underwood, left his kingdom to return upon feeling the fallen god though now his old rivalry had kicked in once the arguments broke out. And even the stoic Hades, who was in the midst of helping Persephone in restraining Kashina from leaving the underworld to help her son, returned, but not before ordering Cerberus to sit on the woman so he could do so. It took Cerberus to sit on the woman to stop her. May order favor you, Apollo, in whatever argument you decide to go against her in, Hades said whilst bowing his head, no doubt thinking of how he would die. Thanks. Apollo said dryly. Finally, Zeus' temper and headache was at its limit and he stood, bellowing out, enough. The Olympian council silenced and Zeus took a deep breath before sitting down. Looking over at his son, the king of Olympus asked, did you know about this? What, that my son is awesome? Well duh, he had to get it somewhere, Apollo replied with a smirk. Damn right other me, a bolt of lightning shot over his head and he yelped quickly answering, no. I didn't know he was connected to Helios. Geez, nearly taking my head off. Why you got to hate the player, Pops? Hate the game, Apollo said. No sooner did the words leave his mouth did he yelp with a duck to dodge a lightning bolt. HMPH, Zeus said, blowing on his master bolt to lose the smoke. Zeus' attention went to Hades, who shook his head in the negative. The god of the sky growled in annoyance, pissed off that this sort of thing went past him without his knowing. All the time, Hades whispered loudly with a smirk, getting a growl from the king. Had he known the boy was a reincarnation he would have avoided this chaotic council meeting. Putting a hand on his head as Athena started to explain her hypothesis concerning the reason behind this reincarnation, Zeus absently wondered what had caused the boy to release such an impressive amount of power. And if he's saying it's impressive, that's saying something. Poseidon said with a smirk. Zeus refused to rise to the jibe. Talia growled as she struggled in Luke's grip. Her one-time friend had recovered from his surprise before she had and was now holding her back with even more vigor than before, his sword pressing against her skin and discouraging her from trying to shock him lest he spaz out and impale her. Damn it, I was wondering why I hadn't done that, Talia grunted with a frown. Luke may have been good in the end, but he was still an ass for what he had done. The taller sickly blonde coughed before murmuring to her, 
Just sit back and watch, Talia. As soon as I get out of this, you're dead, the punk demigoddess growled, forcing her attention to the two powerhouses staring at each other. I really hope she does, Talia thought. She had realized that she was not as close to Luke in this other dimension than she had been here. One stone in the water really does make a ripple, huh? We'll see, Luke retorted as he watched the two facing off as well with a small smirk of confidence. Wipe that smirk off your face already, the hunter muttered in disgust. The screen static came again. Atlas vs. Helios Naruto. Round 2 was the title. Ring the bell, Percy said with a grin. Naruto stood across from Atlas, who still towered over him even at the distance they stood from each other. His energy was too potent to stay within his partially human body, resulting in flickering flames coming off of his body. True, it was why the son of Hermes was dipped in the sticks, Athena said as she nodded in agreement with the assessment. Hermes gave his sister a soured look, thanks for the reminder. The Titan of Endurance saw one of his brothers stand alongside Naruto and growled at their similar appearance. Let it be known that Hyperion and Atlas never got along, doubly so seeing as Hyperion could easily defeat him. Oh, sting, Apollo hissed, not going to be good, those two couldn't ever see eye to eye. I know, grudge match is even better since the kid is shiny the Titan's kid reincarnated, Ares said with a savage grin, wanting some blood to fly. Seeing the apparition of his brother pushed his annoyance to its limits and Atlas's statue-like body tensed before he ran forward, crying out in rage as he did so. Naruto's grin widened and he mimicked the titan's action, only blurring forward in a giant flash of yellow. Atlas brought his javelin back over his left shoulder before swinging it forward. Naruto's body became visible once more as he brought both his arms up to his right side, causing the spearhead to snap off as he blocked the strike. He snapped it. Percy gasped. That was one hard mother sucker. He remembered that one painfully. He carries the power of a god, so it makes sense that he could break the weapon, Artemis stated with a nod. Still epic though, Leo said, shoveling popcorn into his mouth. Atlas roared in anger, tossing his useless staff to the side. Naruto took the opportunity to feint a backhanded left punch, following through with a right fist to the titan's gut. Atlas doubled over at the strike, slightly winded. He made him double over, Annabeth said in a gasp. For a demigod of today to do that, it was nothing short of amazing. Naruto retracted his right hand and brought down his left elbow to the middle of Atlas's back. The titan took one step forward at the strike and tried to counter with a blind left backhand of his own. Naruto ducked under the attack and brought his left leg up to strike Atlas in the chest. Pulling his leg back, Naruto teleported back to Artemis' side and rubbed his shin, ow, 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 ow. It's like kicking a brick wall. Snickers were heard at that one. Bastards like the thing. Rocks for brains, but rocks for abs, too, Hephaestus said in a playful manner. He got a thumbs up from Apollo for the reference. Atlas got back to his feet and spat to the side, the ichor landing in a small splotch that lit up that portion of the cave. He growled in annoyance, he shouldn't be feeling this much pain from this demigod. The followers of the Titans far outnumbered those of the Olympians. And you forget that Helios was not just labeled a god, but a Titan as well, Artemis said, smug filling her voice at watching the barbarian Titan get his just desserts. Think you're getting a little too into this, Talia stated to her matron. Piper snorted and wittingly added, Hot, meat kettle, guess what? You're both black. Who asked you? The annoyance fueled his second wind and he once more ran forward, more of his true form being revealed as he did. Two secondary arms, each an equally statue-like color burst from his massive back and clenched into fists. The others in the room felt their eyes widen and Talia, Luke and Percy immediately shut their eyes when the organs started to burn upon looking at him. Naruto, however, felt no such pain and narrowed his own unique eyes as he fell back into one of his Gamaken stances. So he's immune to an immortal's divine form, Hera said as she blinked in surprise. It seems as such sister, Hestia added, looking at the flickering flamed body of the reincarnated god. Atlas's upper right fist flew forward, making Naruto push it down into his right with his left hand. The titan followed through with his opposite upper arm making a similar attempt only to result in the same, 
yet reversed, outcome. The bearer of the heaven's teeth were bared and his other two fists tried a similar tactic, only for them to be blocked by the inflamed teen's hands. He's a skilled fighter, but trying the same thing over and over. Jason asked in confusion. His pride leads to arrogance. It was how I fooled him, Artemis answered the son of Rome. He cannot accept that a basic tactic is not working on a demigod. Naruto found himself primarily on the defensive as the four fists of the titan kept swinging at him. Naruto countered every few blows, striking out with his hands and delivering bone-cracking blows of his own. Naruto caught an extended arm by the wrist and jumped off the ground to deliver a side double kick to the titan's face. Shouldn't that Naruto guy be shouting out attack names? It happens in anime, Leo pointed out. Annabeth rolled her eyes, just because he's Japanese, doesn't mean he's going to shout out every punch and kick he gives. No, no, the little pyro's got a point. I mean, he is my kid, we need like some cliche shout out to shows. It's just the right thing to do, Apollo said, rubbing his chin in thought, maybe some old Adam West Batman sound effects. Hisa gets it from you, Poseidon whispered to his younger brother with a roll of his eyes, who huffed and ignored him. Atlas stumbled back and growled in annoyance before rushing forward again, faking a right hook and instead delivering a left gut punch that knocked the wind out of his opponent. Percy hissed through his teeth at the sight, Jason wincing alongside him. Atlas, taking advantage of the glowing demigod's moment of recovery, drew all of his fists back, throwing them forward in a united effort to punch the teen. Naruto's arms crossed over his face taking the brunt of the strikes and skidding backwards to the end of the cave. Good, protect that face, Aphrodite said in approval. Fight me, Atlas demanded from his place glaring at the team, you claim to have Helio's power, prove it. Show me this never-ending energy he was famous for. Oh the daft fool, now he's asked for it, Hermes said with an eye roll. The arrogance of Atlas was, once again, going to be his end or defeat since they sadly need the jerkoff to hold the sky up. Naruto lowered his arms, the bruises fading away as he glared at Atlas before his face was covered in a, not arrogant, but an excited grin. Are we sure? Athena jested with a small smile, it looks vaguely like another's grin. Oh, ha, ha, Apollo laughed out with a sarcastic clap to accompany it. Dryly the god of the sun added, goddess of comedy in the house. Opening his left hand, a ball of light started to grow in his hand. As it started to grow, a secondary orange sphere within it started to spin. It literally looked like a miniature sun was growing in his palm, growing to the size of a basketball, which made his grin grow. He ran forward with his hand behind him. Sun Nuke. Apollo cheered. Wait, Sun Nuke. Hazel asked in confusion. No, Sun Nuke. You enunciate the words by adding caps on it. Anyway, just wait and see, the sun god said in giddy. All right, here I come, Naruto's tandem voice said along with that of Helios, feel the burn, Kyoden, Udama Rasengan, solar release, big ball Rasengan. By the time he had reached Atlas, the ball had quadrupled in size, becoming a literal miniature sun. Atlas roared in defiance, his hands reaching out and grabbing the orb as it was held towards him. You cannot stop the sun. Apollo, by order, control yourself, his sister shouted. No way, too epic. The titan and the demigod struggled over the technique, Naruto going as far to put his other hand on the miniature sun and push it towards Atlas. Atlas growled as he struggled against the energy, his hands burning as he held it away from him. Gotta give Atlas some credit, he just doesn't want to stay down. Percy commented. Naruto wasn't having any of it. His royal blue markings started to shine brightly and he released another cry that was followed by a pulse of energy. Outside of the mountain of despair, the actual body of the sun, not Apollo's chariot that directed the sunlight, pierced through the storm clouds with, shining down on the normally hidden mountain and enlightening the nearby city with its rays. Wait, he amped up with the sun itself. Leo said in surprise. Well, he is the reincarnation of the first sun god, it makes sense, Piper said, still trying to wrap her head around a god reborn as a demigod. Atlas grunted as Naruto started to take some steps forward, successfully pushing the titan back. He pushed him, Hades mumbled in surprise. 
Even they would have trouble with Atlas, yet a rare breed demigod with god powers was truly fending him off. His other really hit the jackpot on this one. This. Is. Impossible. Atlas roared out, digging his feet into the ground. An unstoppable force meets the immovable object. Naruto said with a laugh, let's see which of us gives out first, Atlas. Zing. Hermes. Artemis spoke. Better me than Apollo making all the comments, the god of thieves answered. I am the titan of endurance, boy. The general sneered as he stopped the teen's advance by adjusting his footing. You are just another demigod that I will crush beneath my foot. Technically not really a demigod anymore, what is he even called now? Hazel asked, turning to her Greek father. No idea, was Hade's blunt reply accompanied with a shrug. Well it needs a name, Aphrodite Hunk. Maybe my other will come up with one, Athena stated confidently. Apollo rolled his eyes and sarcastically said, Yeah, sure, it should be her. Not, oh, I don't know, the father of the awesome kid and or the replacement god of the sun. Wrong, refuted the teen immediately as he saw something behind Atlas, I'm a demigod with something that someone as paranoid as you will never have. God-like powers at your fingertips, Ares asked with a raised brow. Zoe got up from where she had been resting moments before, racing forward with her bow out. She pulled the weapon over her shoulder before swinging it into the back of Atlas's thigh giving him a charlie horse to rival all charlie horses. Poseidon winced. Oh yeah, that was a charlie horse all right. He should know. He invented it. Artemis smiled and quietly praised her friend. Excellent job, Zoe. Aphrodite pursed her lips and frowned. Gah, she's still around. Atlas cried out and buckled from the strike, allowing Naruto to overpower him and shove the attack into the titan's chest. I've got people I trust to watch my back. Naruto announced before the attack in his hand expanded, encasing Atlas's body and blinding all of the occupants of the room save for the one who had used it. Epic one-liner, Nico said in a deep voice jokingly. Percy lowered his arm once the brightness had faded away, staring at the immobile form of the general as he lay on the ground. Now how to wedge him back in there? Demeter wondered aloud. Yes, he's knocked out for now. How to get him in there? Hera agreed with a furrowed brow. His once glorious armor was nothing but scrap metal and there was a nasty spiraling burn on his chest. Ikor pulled around him, making Percy let out a sigh of relief. Someone take a screenshot, I wanna hang it on my wall, Ares chuckled out. Please, we're hanging this out in the hall, Hermes interjected with a smirk. Only to spin around as Talia released a cry of pain. The three able-bodied warriors looked on as Luke stabbed Talia with his sword, the blade nearly a fourth of the way in her side, a tear trailing down his cheek as he did so. Talia, Annabeth, and Percy's eyes widened. They didn't think Luke would go so far as to do that. Jason was clenching his hands into fists, blue static dancing around him, a large frown on his face. He smiled sadly and said, Sorry Talia but it's for the best if you stay out of my way for now. Castellan. Naruto roared out, blurring forward at the son of Hermes in one large stream of gold. Oh if he didn't have that curse, your boy would be dead then and there Herm, Ares chuckled. Trying to kill a hero's girl, always a way to die fast. Hermes scowled at his older brother, but focused on the story. The betraying demigod glared at him, removing his blade and shoving Talia to the side. Naruto became visible once more, his golden form spearing Luke in the stomach and taking them both through the giant hole in the mountainside over the edge. Percy ran to the edge, peering down to see Luke and Naruto hit the ground with enough force to make a small cloud of dust shoot up. Go for the left pit. Shut up Ares, Hermes shouted loudly. Enough, Zeus commanded to his sons. They turned away from one another and focused on the story. Jackson, wake Phoebe we may be able to save her. Zoe barked as she knelt next to the coughing Talia. Percy looked to the struggling Artemis and back at Zoe in confusion. The lieutenant saw his glance and explained, Lady Artemis is strong enough to hold on for a few seconds more, and she would never forgive us if a maiden died while we could have stopped it. Ah, Zoe, you do care. Talia laughed, or at least tried to as her other was bleeding out. That was horseshit and Percy knew it. 
Hestia gave a stern sideways glare to Percy, who looked straight ahead at the story, preferring not to face the annoyance of the first and last Olympian. As much as either girl didn't want to admit it, they had developed some sort of bond during this quest, just as Naruto and he did. And if the way Naruto picked on you, leading you to bond, then even me and Zoe can bond I guess, Talia smirked to her cousin. He looked once more to Artemis, who looked back at him and nodded, before running over to Phoebe. As he passed the downed form of Atlas, a hand shot out and wrapped around his ankle. Falling to his face, Percy grunted before rolling onto his back and paling at the sight of a slowly rising Atlas. Icor poured out of the corners of his mouth, which was set in a scowl, and one of his eyes was swelling shut. Too good to be true huh? Percy grumbled and prepared a wince, this was going to hurt his other, bad. Helios, the titan roared in anger, where do you think you, re going? One track mind, Demeter sniffed in distaste. Percy couldn't form any words in time, not that it would have helped, before he was whipped to the side of the cavern. He did manage to spin around so that his back was what hit the wall, but that did nothing to lessen the pain he felt on the impact. There's that wince Percy was preparing. Falling forward to land on his stomach with a grunt, Percy looked up and groaned in both pain and concern as the Titan General slowly rose to his feet, his upper left arm looking dislocated at the shoulder while the upper right had been burnt away to the elbow. Nice damage though, Hephaestus praised with a nod, got to love fire. Helios, Atlas bellowed out, stumbling around in a circle for the one-time ally, forever now enemy, face me. Winner takes all, remember. Oh are you all talk now? He sounds desperate. Piper asked in confusion. Dear, it's his silly pride. He just got wrecked by a demigod. And for a prideful titan like Atlas, it is his biggest disgrace in his mind at the moment, her mother explained with a smile before looking back to the screen. She wondered if other Talia would be willing to share for a day. She started to curl a piece of her hair with her finger and sighed. Hopefully her other would also wonder that, actually, it was almost guaranteed that she would. W. Whiskers, Talia pleaded from her place on the ground while Zoe pressed her hand against the wound, where? Be quiet Grace, Zoe snapped as she tried to slow the bleeding and then glared at her father. Bedside manner is not Zoe's thing, Talia deadpanned, to which Artemis nodded in agreement. Helios, Atlas raged as he stumbled towards where Artemis knelt, face me or I'll kill the little goddess you desire. Artemis bristled at that, desire. I think it's more of protective family thing. I mean, I know he's a babe magnet, but there are boundaries you do not cross, Apollo said with pursed lips. Zeus and the two younger sisters of the original six shuffled their feet a bit. There was a golden flash of light and Naruto once more stood in the cave, his arms and fists covered in a little bit of blood from pounding in the face of his one-time friend. Percy smirked a bit, good for Luke. He needed a good smack around. His markings and eyes had turned from blue into blood red and his golden aura was taking on an orange hue. Uh oh. Limit break. Leo called out. Atlas spun to face the teen and a delirious grin spread across his face. Excellent. Laughed out the titan before he brought his two fists up. Now we fight until only one stands. Naruto shifted so that his right leg was set a foot behind his left his right hand loosely making a fist before his chest while the left hand extended out and remained open. Naruto's knees bent and his aura swayed to and fro like an ever-burning flame. The two opponents stayed opposite one another for what felt like an eon, before Naruto turned his left hand and gestured for the titan to come at him. Such a cliché move, but it feels so necessary, Apollo stated with a nod. Atlas's manic grin widened and he pushed off the ground making a large indent as he did so. Naruto's red sun-like irises shone brightly before he also shot forward, a trail of orange flames behind him. The two powerful forces brought their right hands back and punched, their fists colliding and sending a shockwave through the mountain that was felt all the way on Olympus. Okay that is powerful, Jason muttered in surprise. Understatement of the year there golden boy, Nico said in equal surprise. Percy watched as the two traded blows, neither speaking nor taunting the other, but creating shockwaves on their impacts. It was like something out of that old Dragon Ball Z cartoon, something he thought would be cool to see firsthand. 
He retracted that thought as he realized his whole body was shaking just from the impacts that were made. You know, it is like DBZ, Piper nodded. He did kinda go super cyan, Leo supplied with a smirk. So that should mean he has more stages, Percy said jokingly. We can never know with this dude, wet head, Talia added as she smirked. If this is what a battle with one titan feels like, how would we survive a war against all of them? Percy asked himself. Don't worry, we did, so can you, Percy said to his other with a smirk. He knew they would, even with these added new elements. He heard Talia cough and looked over to the unconscious Phoebe. Looking up, he saw the ceiling start to crumble and groaned. Hey water boy, a familiar deep voice called out over the shockwaves. Percy looked around before finding Naruto's discarded shield lying near him. Army crawling over to the mystical item, he grabbed it and heard Q speak once more, about damn time, I've been trying forever to get someone's attention. Listen, if that daughter of Zeus dies, the kid is going to go nuclear. Really? Ares asked intrigued. Be silent Ares, his father said coolly, eyes ever stern. He isn't now, Percy asked incredulously. This is just him mad, you do not want a ballistic Naruto on your hands, Q intoned, imagine that giant glow stick of your uncle's. It is not a glow stick, Zeus said in rage while the other Olympian snickered. The king doth protest too much, methinks, said Hades with a sly grin. Zeus's face was an impressive red from that. Now imagine that in the hands of a titan. The outcome is similar to what Naruto would do if his mate dies. Mate. Talia sputtered, getting cat calls and coos from the others in the chamber, much to her ever-rising embarrassment. Mate, Percy repeated with an arched brow. Oh, mate, girlfriend, whatever. Details. Now let's go get the hunter and save the Spitfire, Q said. Do it, like they do it on the Discovery Channel. Apollo sang out before his sister hit him upside the head. Rubbing the abused spot, he argued, ow. What? It had to be said. Talia just wanted to die in a hole, right now, prompting Percy to nod, using the shield as it was made for. Percy pushed himself to his feet and defended himself from the falling rocks. Reaching Phoebe's side, Percy started to jostle her shoulder until she shot awake with wide eyes. Lady Artemis, she exclaimed, before turning to glare at Percy, get your hands off me, Jax and I have to save. Argue later. Percy interrupted her as he grabbed her arm and helped her up. He dragged her over to Talia and pointed at the wound, save her. Yeah, Phoebe, move it, Talia urged. It sucked watching yourself kind of die from blood loss. What happened what in the name of Rhea? Phoebe cried out as another shockwave caused her to stumble. She turned to see Naruto catching one of Atlas's fists and countering with an elbow to the face while Artemis struggled with the sky on her shoulders. I would be vastly confused too, if I just woke up to see what was happening, Annabeth nodded in sympathy for the hunter. Zoe grabbed her fellow hunter and pulled her down. I shall explain later, the lieutenant said before pointing at Talia, how do we stop the bleeding? Annoyed at being kept in the dark while shockwaves continued and that their lady was still in danger, Phoebe nonetheless examined the wound before searching her cloak for her emergency supplies. She groaned in annoyance when she couldn't find anything, before looking at Zoe, if I had my supplies I would be able to stop it, but I don't have my pack. I must have dropped it when the general. Then what do we do? Percy asked, looking down at Talia as her breathing slowed, if Talia dies, Naruto's going to lose it. Not just lose it, he's going to forget he ever had it, Q piped in. Ares opened his mouth, but another stern glare from his father made him click his jaw shut. Gods. I hate romance, Phoebe groaned before Zoe nudged her. Seeing the pointed look the girl gave her, Phoebe turned volatile, absolutely not. I refuse to sink that low, there's got to be something I can use around here. We don't have the time, Phoebe. Zoe exclaimed, just do it. For the girl. Fine. Phoebe snapped back, placing her hands over the wound. She glared at Zoe and then at Percy, what you hear stays between us, do you understand me Jackson? What's she doing? Piper asked Talia, but the hunter shook her head. I haven't got a clue, was the soft response. Sure, whatever, Percy agreed, just save her. Taking a deep breath,
Phoebe pressed her hands against the wound before she said something Percy would never forget in a million years. Father Apollo, healer of all sorts of wounds, I apologize for not speaking in many moons. Forgiving Father, Apollo, help me heal the hole from the knife. Do this and I will, I will not deny the origin of my life. Wait, she's your kid, Talia said in surprise as she looked at the twin gods. Artemis gave a small smile and Apollo gave a sad one. Yep, the sun god said simply, not willing to go further into it. Phoebe's hands shone brightly, brighter than Naruto's ever had, before Talia's impaled side slowly seared shut. As the wound became shallower, the healing sped up. By the time the wound was closed, the glow in Phoebe's hands had died down and her moonlight tan had become a sun-kissed one. Much better, Apollo stated with a nod but his sister gave him a look, what? I'm just saying it makes her look better. Do not talk about the way my hunters look, was the sharp reply, warning. Okay, no, we are not doing this. Argument over, the god of music said in a stern tone as his sister nodded. Percy looked at Phoebe, then to the still fighting Naruto who just took a punch to the face that had to hurt, and back to the girl before he spoke, your dad is. I said not to speak of it. Phoebe snarled before recomposing herself and looking down at her tanner than average skin, I, hold no love for Apollo as a father. As my latest brother, he has just slightly a little respect. Ouch, Hermes winced, he gave a knowing look to his brother, who nodded in kind for the sympathy. Talia groaned and Phoebe looked thankful for the excuse to change the subject, she's waking up, but she'll be too sore to fight. Where's Castellan? About 500 feet below sea level I would say, Q chimed in with a dark snicker. Hermes winced again, Apollo giving him a sort of apologetic look, but not really putting his full effort in it. What could he say? Luke was a dick. What in the name of Zeus did I miss? Phoebe asked her lieutenant. Before her question could be answered, a final shockwave caused the ceiling to give way and separate the four teens from the two immortals and the glowing demigod. And now they miss the epic fight. Leo snickered. Well good thing I can see it from here, Percy joked back with a smile. Phoebe and Zoe ran to the wall that separated them and pounded their fists against it. Damn, Zoe exclaimed, punching the wall, now what do we do? Have some faith, Q idly commented as the sword flew back to the sheath from where it lay. The spirit of the shield panted as said shield reverted to its bracelet form, damn, that's exhausting. Thank the gods I didn't try that while the kid was using me. He'd probably be dead by now. Cool magic trick, Hazel said with a nod. The two fighting beings traded blow after blow, neither giving the other an opportunity to take a small breather. While stuck in a head clinch, Naruto had driven his elbow sharply into the titan's gut. After Atlas released him, Naruto grabbed the titan's head and jumped up, driving his knee into the titan's nose and shattering it. The gods cheered loudly at the fight, and laughed at the shattered nose of the titan. Atlas stumbled for a moment, but quickly recovered and drove his massive right fist into Naruto's stomach, making the teen double over and allowing him to grab hold of the golden fighter's shoulder and leg, lifting him up before dropping him down onto a knee, breaking a few ribs. Everyone winced at that one. Naruto had needed a second to come back from that, catching Atlas's foot when the titan tried to kick him in the already broken ribs. Pulling Atlas off his feet, Naruto gained a few seconds to breathe easy before he began a long combo filled with a brawler's favorite attack, mean punches. Ares whooped uncontrollably at that, rounding his fist in the air like a frat boy. To top it off, Naruto brought his left fist back and delivered a nasty left hook that dislocated the titan's jaw. Atlas stumbled into the cavern's wall with a muffled cry as he coughed up Ikor, before a sickening crack filled the area. Atlas snapped a grin on Naruto before rushing him with his fists back and ready to strike. Naruto managed to block a few, but another left punch to his gut should really work on watching that left side, Naruto absently thought had knocked him off guard. It's always the left, Percy stated grimly, getting some snickers. Naruto's head snapped up as Atlas delivered a powerful right uppercut, causing him to stumble back into the wall that separated him from the others. His orange and red glow had faded back to the normal golden and blue glow he started with as his rage bled away to determination. 
He made a nervous glance to Artemis before spitting to the side a mixture of blood and ichor. By his estimation, he now had four broken ribs, three fractured ribs, a cracked jaw, a sprained wrist, a mild concussion and a partridge in a pear tree. Oh, look at the pretty little birdie, Leo said while his head spun jokingly. No, wait that was the concussion. No duh, Hazel deadpanned. Give up, Helios, the delirious titan demanded, his breathing just as if not worse bad as Naruto's. He definitely had a concussion, if not a cracked skull courtesy of Naruto's thankfully thicker skull, a broken nose, several broken ribs, a bruised solar plexus, a dislocated jaw that was forcibly put back in place mid-fight and then there were his upper arms. Naruto had at some point managed to completely rip the left arm off while the right was still burnt away to the elbow. Kid fucks shit up, Ares said with an impressive nod with respect. Atlas paid no heed to Naruto's evaluation of their current injuries, merely spitting more ichor to the side as his one good eye focused on the glowing team, before he continued, as it is, only one of us will remain standing. But if that's the case, who will take Artemis' place? And there's the clincher, Poseidon grunted with a frown. Naruto looked to his aunt, who while looking tired, was still strong enough to hold the sky up, if only dropping it by millimeters every now and then. He knew that she'd never allow him to sacrifice himself for her sake, and that if Atlas came out the victor he'd leave her to suffer beneath his former punishment. So that meant he would have to somehow get Atlas back under the sky. There was no way he could shove the titan back into his punishment so that left somehow tricking the titan back underneath the sky. Someone say trick, Hermes asked with mischief in his tone and a twinkle in his eyes. No, they said treat, Apollo said smartly back with a grin. Getting his little brother to roll his eyes. Let it be known that I am a fucking genius, Naruto mused as his mouth quirked back into a smirk. He could hear Helios distantly laugh in the back of his head and knew that the former titan god agreed with his absolutely batshit insane plan. Yes, because that is a good thing, Hestia deadpanned. Good, he wasn't the only one to come up with stupid plans on the fly. Have you even met Percy? Nico asked jokingly and smiled at his cousin, who pouted at him. Well, have you no more witty one-liners? The titan of endurance asked, no more words from the mouthy god of the sun. Nothing about having enough energy to outlast me. Bitch please. Apollo. Wa sis. Just saying. I've only got two words for you, Atlas, Naruto said as he held his hands up in front of him. They blurred through three hand seals that he had learned back as a child when he was training to be a soldier for his country. I'll allow your final words, Helios. Atlas spat, stalking forward with his knuckles cracking as his massive hands formed fists. Don't puke, Naruto said as his hands landed on the final seal before he called out, Taju Kawarimi no Jutsu multiple body replacement technique. Atlas's confusion remained as he suddenly appeared in Naruto's place before moving once more to his former prison. The weight of the sky pressed against his shoulders and Atlas screamed in pain as well as anguish, no. He did not just swap places like that on the fly, did he? Jason asked, gaping. I think he did, Percy said, nodding numbly. Naruto stood where Atlas once was before collapsing on his knees while Artemis fell forward to her hands. Both panting heavily before Naruto started to laugh and fell to his back, his golden form fading away to nothing while the strange mix of ichor and blood poured from his wounds. That's an interesting condition, Athena murmured with a gaze. Atlas swore at him in Greek while struggling to hold up what was his father's domain and Artemis, recovering from her ordeal, stared at her nephew in surprise while he laughed joyfully. His laughter quieting down into sniggers, Naruto managed to exclaim, I can't believe it actually worked. Damn right my boy, you rock. Apollo said pointing to his kid, whose kid has done that, oh wait, no ones, ha. Zeus cleared his throat and looked at his archer son. Apollo rolled his eyes and amended himself sarcastically, of today's demigods, not back in the day. Very impressive, Artemis agreed as she closed the book, who would like to read next? Well I guess since all the excitement is over, I could do it, Nico said with a shrug. Zero Frank slowly rose from the Hudson River, Rambo style, as he was still in New Jersey. His ever-long battle with the gerbil uprising continuing.
As he rose from the water, his wet hair matted his face, said face was covered in war paint. He was also shirtless. He pulled out his bow from the dirty water and pulled back. In three successions of his bow, he nailed five gerbils in rows with three arrows. Gerbil kebabs, all ready, he said in a gruff tone, his eyes harder for war. It was time for dinner. Chapter End